well, this is going to be quite a different blog <laughs> this week. Um, I'm actually here at Windsor Park in Belfast, home of Linfield and also of Northern Ireland. It's the national stadium here in Northern Ireland. Um, now, perhaps a lot of you didn't know this, but before I kind of moved back over to Ireland, um, I was actually a sports photographer working for a company called Action Plus Sports. In fact, I still work for the company. Um, and they've let me out from behind the desk for a few days, well, actually for a couple of weeks. I'm actually covering the Women's Under-19 uh, European Championships, which are being held here in Northern Ireland. And when I moved over here to England, I actually sold all of, uh, to Ireland, sorry, I actually sold all of my Canon kit. Um, so I had a 400 f 2.8, a 70 to 200 2.8, a couple of Canon 1DXs. And I just really didn't have the need for them. So obviously I was fully 100% Fuji. Now, Fuji don't really have at the moment a long uh, prime lens, like a 2.8, uh, like a 400 or a 300 2.8, nor do I think they will actually bring one of those out. Um, of course, fingers crossed. I think there could be a chance of a 300 f4 in 2018, let's see. But what they do have is they have a 50 to 140 to it, which is the equivalent of a 70 to 200 to it, which is the which is really the workhorse of a sports photographer, especially football, rugby, things like that. So Fuji actually loaned me um, a second XT2. I already own an XT2, along with a power grip, um, and also the uh, 50 to 140. So I'm actually down here at Windsor Park and covering the uh, opening two games here. Um, uh, earlier on, uh, Germany beat Scotland 3-0 <coughs> in a very one-sided affair and Northern Ireland are playing Spain in about an hour's time. So covering the match with an XT2 with the 50-140, to that's an equivalent of a 70-200. to And then my other XT2, again with the power grip, with the 100-400. to Now as the light starts to drop, it'll be interesting to see how that 1-400 to uh, copes because of course with the variable aperture, it's not really what you want, you know, you really want that F, uh, fast 2.8 lens. But the 70 to 200, well, the 50 to 140, ooh, that's impressive, very impressive. So over the next couple of weeks, covering about six or seven games, I'm also covering a golf tournament um, at the end of the week. Um, so it's going to get plenty of use over the next uh, couple of weeks doing sports, and I shall um, let you know my thoughts. But first impressions? Not too shabby. Let me just show you Windsor Park. So this is a completely different Windsor Park to what I used to uh, come to when I was a kid. It's all been renovated. Um, looking quite spectacular actually. And a few more people in for the Northern Ireland game. So yeah. So I'm going to go back into the wire room now. Finish off wiring any images that I have from the first game. And then get ready for Northern Ireland against Spain. Catch up later. Well, good morning. Um, apologies for no further updates from the match last night. Um, probably going to be difficult for me to actually give any sort of video updates during the game. You're, you know, whenever you're covering a, any kind of sporting event, your mind's completely on the game. So we'll try to kind of interject some little snippets of video, kind of pre-game, um, maybe halftime. Certainly in between the two matches, there's normally two matches on a day and then post-match, which may be after uh, the, the day after. So, just a very quick update. A couple of things from last night um, that I probably need to work on. First of all, so the X-T2 that Fuji loaned me, unfortunately, I didn't realize until the last minute that it still had the old um, firmware on it. Um, numerous sort of fixes and improvements in the AF, for example. Uh, but the big thing that's missing from the version 2 firmware, which is a, a real key necessity when you're doing sports photography, is adding an audio clip. Um, quite often when you're photographing a sporting event, either you um, won't know the player. Of course, I don't really know any of the um, under-19 uh, ladies' teams. Um, and you, the, the numbers will be hidden. So it's good to just put a little audio clip in there. So whenever you're post-processing that, when you're wiring that later in the evening, you know who it is. Um, even if you know who it is, sometimes you'll also add an audio clip, just what's going on. Maybe someone's received a yellow card, someone's annoyed, someone's celebrating. 
So that was frustrating. So first thing this morning, I'm gonna get the firmware updated. So the next thing that I need to kind of look into a little bit, now I know you can do this on the Fuji cameras. I'm not too sure how much customization you can actually do. So quite often when you're shooting a sporting event, um, what I did on the Canon systems was I set up a number of presets. Presets such as, you know, shutter speed, ISO, exposure compensation, you know, various bits and pieces. So in certain, in certain situations, maybe the lighting changed, one of the, the, um, the biggest issues that you have at football grounds is when the player is in shadow but the stands behind them um, are lit up like a Christmas tree because of the sunlight. And of course, if you use normal metering with a normal uh, exposure, um, what will happen is the camera will see all of this bright light behind the player and will underexpose the player. And what you then need to do in post is pull out the shadows, which is never ideal. So typically what you wanna do in those situations is actually overexpose by maybe half a stop or a stop, depending on what's going on. Now, of course, what that will mean is the background will be really overexposed, but the player should be properly exposed, or at least if you do have to pull out the shadows a little bit, um, it won't be as extreme. Um, now, last night we had that situation. We had a number of times where the sun was in and out from behind the clouds. So the settings were completely changing. Now, obviously what I don't want to be doing is making changes to exposure compensation, yada, yada, especially with dials. So what I really want to be able to do is actually set up some, some presets that I can quickly access um, without taking my eye away from the viewfinder, I'd like to say, um, just quickly make, make some changes. Now, I'm not sure that's going to be possible, especially eye from the viewfinder, but I'm certainly gonna look into that. It's not something that I've really needed to do on the Fuji cameras up until now, obviously being mostly on a landscape perspective, but that's something that I really wanna look into. Um, first impressions though, very impressed with that um, 70 to 200 equivalent, the 50 to 140. Um, so much so that um, I'm terrified that I may end up buying one. Um, it's it's beautiful. And with the X-T2, with the power grip, um, and shooting at 11 or even 14 frames a second, but even 11 frames a second, it, it just felt really, really good. Um, as expected, the 1 to 400, it was okay. Um, the second match as the light started to fade, now it's still summertime uh, over here, summertime rain, but summertime. Um, and so it wasn't too bad, um, but I certainly wouldn't want to take it to um, a, a nighttime football game. Um, you know, whenever you're shooting at the three, 400 mark and you're up at 5.6, you're just not gonna get um, the shutter speed and the ISO that you, that you really want. But that's okay, that's kind of what I understood. It still, it still did, it did what, I, what I really wanted. Now what was interesting was normally when I'm shooting um, a football match, I'd have the 70 to 200 and I'd have the 400. So of course, when I'm looking through the long lens, I have a fixed 400 view. With the one to 400, I actually find myself kind of zooming in and out a little bit too much. Um, and, and kind of, I, I almost, even though that's, that's uh, versatile, I almost find myself kind of wanting just to force myself to stick on one focal length. So what I may do actually in the next game coming up on Friday, um, I might actually set the um, one to 400 at a fixed focal length, just to kind of know, okay, that's when I'm either too close with, with this lens and I'll switch over to the, to the 70 to, to, to 200. Um, but yeah, quite impressed. I'll um, throw up some images um, after this here. These will be from the Northern Ireland Spain game and also from the Scotland Germany game. Um, but yeah, impressive so far. Next up, the Northern Ireland Golf. That's on Thursday. Catch up then. Bye-bye. Well, here we are back again um, at Windsor Park. Um, it's another two game header. First up, it'll be Italy against France and then Netherlands against England. Um, I've also been covering golf the last couple of days as well. So the last update that we had, um, we ended up, um, I was talking about the fact that the Fuji camera that was on loan from Fuji didn't have the latest uh, firmware. 
So I've updated the um, firmware. That's all been done, excuse me. A um, couple of other settings that have changed. On the Fuji cameras, um, obviously you do your exposure compensation uh, using the little dial on top. And I love that during landscape photography because it kind of slows you down. During sports, not so much. You want quick access to that exposure compensation. Um, so actually on the X-T2, um, you can twiddle an orb round to C, I think it is. I think it's a little letter C. And that then puts exposure compensation onto the front jog wheel. You push it in and then you can twiddle the exposure compensation. So that's that's really, really good. Um, but loving the 40 to 150 lens, um, just fantastic, really, really sharp. Um, obviously at the Gulf uh, over the last couple of days, we've had a little bit of rain as well, but a little like mizzle. Um, and the 50 to 140 has just been, just been phenomenal. Scarily so, uh, I might end up having to invest in one of those. Um, so yeah, so back doing football today, as I say. Um, quite pleased with the results from the matches uh, the other night. Um, say, it's definitely the 50 to 140. It just felt like use, using my Canon 70 to 200. So really impressed with that. So I end up using um, single point. Um, I don't use zone focusing AF when I'm shooting football. I find that uh, the zone, you can't make it small enough just to lock onto one player. Um, however, I do use AF custom setting two for football. Avoid objects that sort of pass in front of your main object. That means if you're locked onto a player and another player runs in front of that player, your focus won't then go hunting. So I use um, AF continuous. Um, I'm on 14 frame or 11 frames a second in boost mode. Um, and I'm using single point. Um, I also have the orientation um, set, depending on what orientation I have with the, um, with the camera. So obviously if I'm on a horizontal orientation, my focus point is somewhere near the middle. If I then switch to portrait, the AF point automatically goes to the top of the screen. Just little things like that help you sort of quickly focus in when you're um, in the middle of a, of a match. So yeah. Impressed so far with the Fuji, um, two more football games and then two big days at the golf tomorrow. I'll probably give you another update, um, maybe even before the end of this evening. But uh, for now, here's some images from the golf, first two days of the Northern Ireland Open. So it's times like this you really hope that those Fuji cameras weather sealing comes into play. It is absolutely chucking it down. So you might ask why I'm, well first whispering and also sitting behind a Jaguar XE. I'm not a car person. <clears throat> so I'm back at the Gulf and it's a beautiful sunny day. And when the sun's out and you have, not that you'll probably be able to see that, some nice fluffy clouds, you're looking for something a little bit different. <laughs> And of course, you're looking to use something wide. So, mainly using the 10 to 24 today. Um, well, this morning anyway. It's shootout Sunday, so this is the second round. Last players are just about to finish and come onto this tee. So what I'm doing is I'm shooting F16. And of course, there's some nice little sunbursts coming off the metalwork. And because of the Fuji's awesome silent shutter I'm able to shoot quite close to the players so going wide fully wide 10 mil players on the tee just after they've hit the ball nice wide kind of just something a little bit different and of course if they get a hole in one they win this car apparently if no one wins the car I, I get it or something I think maybe not anyway better put this away again because definitely one of the rules of shooting golf is you gotta keep quiet so I think the last group in the second round are just about to reach the T or reach the, um, the the green on the last hole and then they'll be coming on here and then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna follow these guys round and then go get something to eat so when you're shooting something like golf and you've got lovely blue sky especially when there's some of the white fluffy clouds in get that wide angle on and start to look for some different angles. Catch up soon.
So back at Windsor Park for the um, under-19 uh, semi-finals. First up, Holland against Spain. Uh, my tips on Holland. And then we have Germany against France. My tips, uh, Germany. So a German-France final. Um, so just a couple of things. Um, firstly, the X-T2 that I have borrowed from Fuji, the shutter button has got a little bit funky. Um, I'm not sure whether that was the rain uh, or something else, but meh, just a little bit funky. So that, that has caused me a little bit of an issue when I've been kind of, you know, trying to kind of grab the shot. So one thing that I find quite interesting is, one of the things I love about um, the Fuji cameras is obviously as you look through the viewfinder, um, you get to see what the image is going to look like. Now I'm still keeping an eye on the histogram and obviously things like that, but you actually get to see what the, what the image is going to look like. Now, it's a little bit off-putting when you're doing sports because of course the exposure can change quite a lot. And so as you're kind of moving your camera around, the exposure can kind of get a little bit darker, a little bit brighter, a little bit darker. Um, I have, however, got sort of used to that, and it's quite nice, obviously, to still be able to see what the image is going to look like. Still, of course, paying attention to the histogram. However, for some reason, on, I think it was the other night, I, for the, some footage that I didn't actually record, it was the last group games up in Balamina. That exposure kind of um, preview wasn't working for some reason. I just don't know why. Now, I haven't had a chance to, to look into why that is, but just a little bit odd, and so I had to go back to kind of purely you know paying attention to the um to the actual exposure reading the meter reading that, that the camera was getting so but apart from that there once again the fuji cameras have been um really really good um the light um for the germany northern ireland game was actually really really nice as well so that allowed me to sort of play about a little bit with some nice light so all in all still really enjoying it i've only got another couple of days left in fact the semi-finals today and then sunday the final and then the 50 to 140 and the second xt2 goes back to the fuji mothership but yeah so we're going to do some preview stuff now it's quite nice so get some nice uh images while the girls are warming up and um yeah go from there catch up soon bye bye Well, it's now actually a couple of weeks since the European Championship finals ended and the golf ended. Um, what was going on in the background was also I was moving house. So it all became just a little bit um, crazy and I didn't get a chance to record anything at the end of the final. The next day I had to send back the Fuji kit and then my focus was completely on moving house. So apologies for the delay in getting this vlog out. Not that it'll seem like a delay to you because it's all squeezed into these 20 minutes. Um, the one thing for sure, I'm still hopeless at predicting results. I had obviously gone for a Germany-Holland final. Um, nope, it ended up being a France-Spain final. And then I thought to myself, okay, I'll go for France. That seems to be the one. And the final was going fantastic. So I got the early goal um, for France, great stuff. Um, and then Spain equalised. Um, then with about 10 minutes left, um, even though Spain were all over France, I thought, no, 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 France come good in the second half. And sure enough, with about 10 minutes left, bang, got the winning goal for France. Happy days. As a photographer in a, in a final, be it a major final, be it a minor final, in any final, getting the winning goal, oh, that's exactly what you want. So I'm kind of down, getting it ready, getting ready to wire. What's that now? Spain have equalised? Oh, well that's, that's a shame. Well, maybe, maybe France will... Oh, hang on. Spain have scored again. Oh, Spain have won. <sighs> eh. You lose some, you lose some. That seems to be the order of the day. Anyway. General, general view on the Fuji kit? Absolutely loved it. Um, there were a few 
issues along the way and would I say it's exactly like shooting on the 1DX in the 70 to 200? Well, no. But could it hold its own at a football match? Absolutely. Um, if Fuji end up bringing a, please, 400 to it, I can't see it happening, a 300 F4 along with the X-T2 and the power grip and the uh, 50 to 140 and the X-T2 and the power grip would be an absolutely fantastic little combination because of course with the crop sensor as well a 300 would give me the equivalent of a 400 f4 type lens so fingers crossed on that sadly however the second xt2 and the 50 to 140 has now gone back to the fuji mothership um, and for me it's back to the picture desk and operational side of things for our agency don't plan to shoot many more sports over the next couple of months and it's back to landscapes as well so um, hopefully you've enjoyed this little break from landscapes um, my next vlog is part two of my Scotland trip which was way back and then hopefully we'll get in to some kind of um, uh, routine after that for now though um, hopefully you enjoyed this and of course if you have any questions um, in regards to the sporting work um, then please let me know for now, I'm just going to leave you with a selection of images that I've taken over the summer with the Fuji kit. This is a combination. This is a combination of the Irish Open, the Northern Ireland Open, and of course the football, along with the um, Northwest 200 motorbikes. So enjoy those, and we'll catch up soon. Bye bye.